welcome to Witness. I'm Rida Fakhri. Suna Goluba was a photojournalist in his native Uganda. But like many others, he thought he could make a better, more lucrative living in Europe. And like many others, he was disappointed. Suna has been living illegally in the Netherlands since 2004. And after doing years of underpaid jobs, he realizes that coming to Europe was a mistake. In this, the second of our two films following Suna's story, he returns to Uganda for the first time in seven years. But he soon discovers that returning home is complicated and that there are huge expectations on him as the one who has seen the bright lights of Europe. Suna's story, The Return. Welcome to Surprising Europe, a program about the lives of Africans here in Europe. All over Europe, fellow Africans try to survive in the European jungle of rules and regulations. Searching for opportunity in a world full of discrimination and risk. But do they really tell you the true story about Europe? It's the African boy, surprising Europe. I came to Germany as a surprise to Europe. I beat my chest, I made it here. I made it in Africa, I can make it here. Yeah, I like the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> Can we go back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Want to go back? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. you're going to come to Europe and live in Europe, the best thing you have to do in your mind, psychologically, be prepared for the worst. Because this is a gamble we are just playing on our life when we come to Europe. You understand? This, uh, this is the first item. Introducing you as, as, yeah. the, as the initiator. Yeah. Then there's an item about these guys who are uh, parking guards mm -hmm. in Spain. When we came, there was no work here. So all of us come here every morning to park cars. You have to walk about one hour, 30 minutes before you reach here. So you come and stand here, you will not even eat. And then the, the big item is about 2,000 undocumented Africans in Paris who've come together because their only chance really to stay mm -hmm. is to demonstrate. good to have so many people. If you don't believe, they don't believe me, then there will be other, other people, you understand? That the point of it should be to put people off coming. Is that how you see it? No. No. I see this as something which just giving people information. I came to Europe five years ago. I come to Europe five years ago. I came to Europe five years ago with high expectations. Tomorrow I'm going to Uganda. I'll meet my mother and my daughter after six years. Yeah, do you have a size for like a little girl like uh, 12 years? 12 years? Yeah. I want a good bag for my mother. For the mother? Yeah. Six years. It's not a small thing. Sometimes when you're a man, you have to take some difficult decisions. So I'm just thinking that this is one of the toughest decisions I have uh, ever made. So I'm a little bit scared and a little bit happy that at least I can have something which my people can see. Mama. 
Then, oh, 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 I made a mistake. Oh, they got to see we are happy of what he has brought for us. So mm -hmm. we have to let him go back and, and to get more than this one. It was good, but sometimes also it was shocking in the sense that uh, it was really too much poor. What can I say? I need to do something about it. I'm staying in a hotel because I would love to stay with those people because at the end of the day, they are my people. I cannot deny them no matter that situation is bad or worse, they are still my people. But I have also to think about money issue, whereby everybody is coming to you, give me money, give me money, I have this problem, I have this, what, what, what. So I, I thought it's wise to stay here for some time. We are going to hold a press conference today. I am a little bit nervous. I'm just worried that these people, they might interpret the project in, a, in their own way, you understand? Uh, on my right is Suna Koloba, a journalist, a photo journalist used to work with the book at the newspaper. I know what it means to be illegal in a European country. I was in German, I was in Netherlands. What does it mean to go and suffer? <laughs> Sometimes we, we just talk about stress here, but do you know the stress in Europe? For someone who doesn't have papers, <laughs> before I thought I would make it in Europe. But the money is not there, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'd like to know whether you are doing this for purposes of reducing people going to your countries or you're doing it for just for the case of helping Africans. I'm not discouraging anybody to go to Europe. I'm just giving information to people. If you really have to convince me that it's hard through giving me vivid experience of what you went through for me to get convinced that life there is very hard. Or if you want to come to Europe and live in Europe, be prepared for the worst. How you imagine in Africa that's not how you will see it here. Be aware before you go and watch surprise. <laughs> I'm not discouraging anybody, but I'm just giving information. You know, when you're here, we are told that everything is okay. And that's why you see people sell their houses, leave schools, leave whatever they are doing. People consume stuff that is organically modified just because it's from Europe. I'm so happy to see him. To see him, he's a very good man. Nice to see you again. What's your trouble? One, they would like also to know if there is opportunity for me now to come back here and I start my job again. Actually, opportunities in this company have no limit. 
But what we need, and somebody is not, we don't employ people on the basis of their faces, but the skills, the ability to perform. We don't employ you because of uh, because we knew you before, or because of uh, or because we've been uh, to Netherlands. But you have to prove yourself first before we take you on as a permanent employee. Now I am back. I have to start from zero. Like the man, the man was clear that he has to prove himself. We are not taking sooner because we love soon. We don't know whether this is the sooner we used to know five years or six years before. Every Saturday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Prime time at the Pokemon Club. Well, you all very welcome. I have my colleagues here. This is William Mukisa. William Mukisa is the producer for Primetime, uh, an edutainment program. Now, this is really, it's getting me interested. What really happens there? What really goes wrong and what is successful there? What are the good things? So, hearing the story of someone who has not yet gotten the money and you're just going to look for it, that makes me like, uh huh, let me first listen to all the stories and I make my <laughs> decision when I'm really informed with uh, all that is at hand. Yeah, I just can't wait. What <laughs> 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 that thing? Oh, yeah. Join me again after the break for more of Suna's story. Welcome back to Witness. Suna Goluba has been living illegally in the Netherlands since 2004. After years of working on low-paid jobs, he began to realize that coming to Europe had been a mistake. Now he's keen to make sure others don't fall into the same trap. to want to go and live abroad. Uh -huh. This is a time that you may want to pay close attention. Yes, please. As in, you play, uh, put your high eyes together. Uh -huh. You know what? And you understand mm. what really goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. Apache Mauta! Thank you. I'm trying to just to give information to Africans, but not to discourage them. Anybody who wants to try, he or she can try, but you will see. If you want to come to Europe and live in Europe, the best that you have to do in your mind, psychologically, be prepared for the worst. I came to Europe five years ago with high expectations. In Uganda, I was a successful photojournalist and I wanted to expand my career in Europe. Over 140 murders, racist motivated murders, that is. Alberto Adriano, a Mozambican father of three, was brutally murdered by skinheads in Dessau. But I'm glad that Germans are willing to address it, and I hope the rest of Europe will join in. In the meantime, we Africans will continue to sleep with one eye open. I am at a Bantu for surprise in Europe, in Germany. Are you trying to say there are no successful stories of, uh, of, of people like who have really gone there? I mean, we see people here 
gallivanting around in big cars and what. So, are, 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 are those guys pretenders? Is that what you're trying to say? Thank you. Understood that it seems there is no black gentleman who is uh, successful in Europe. I believe I will have to go and try for myself. Thank you. We have the best. Everything we have, what are we looking for? Just yes, here, it does not to come to you. <laughs> because people come back when they have a lot of money. Where do they get that money? Having a visa, it doesn't mean that you have a job. You can reach in Europe, like me, I went with my visa. Uh -huh. But reaching in Europe, I didn't know that they are going to ask me working permit. So. That's so on thing. top of getting a visa, going to Europe, you still have to look for a, a permit. For sure. Wow. Then another question directed to you is, uh, eh? you're here telling us to stay, not to go that side. How sure are we that after two, three days, you're not going to disappear and go back? This is my country. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't have... What can I say? Actually, me I She's called Ruth. Ruth. Okay, Mrs. Ruth. Eh? Ruth. Ruth. So, she's been... He has lived a servant life, you know. His life is, is teaching us. So he has used his life as a tool to teach us. And I think that is the first step. It's really good and I think it's excellent. a long time since I left my country and I left my daughter back. I grown up in the family where I had only a mother. I didn't have a father. My father died when I was four years old. So I know how she feels when I'm not there. Children need to be shown lots of love. I don't recognize my girl. Oh, you're going to come on. Oh, oh. like this, we give it to the small, small boys and small girls. How do you see? Is it okay? We... My girl, she has now completed her primary seven. She's going for, for, for six years, then to the university. I would really love to keep my girl going to school. So that's my dream right now. And I uh, really am going to do anything I can, everything in my reach, to see that I succeed. Soon I tell Van Saba a day. What you will do? Cutting up what I've been doing, you know? Uganda <laughs> Bwetambula <laughs> 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 
One would wonder why Suno is coming from a poor family. He started this project. Yeah, no matter where you are poor, it doesn't mean that you have to suffer. Or it doesn't mean that you have to keep quiet and you see other people suffering because you are also poor. If you ask me, was it your time, the time for you to go back, I said no. But I came here purposely for the project, to promote the project here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but on the other hand, I am also happy. uplifting story and a positive take on one of the most significant issues facing the world today. Thank you for watching and I hope you can join me next time here on Witness.